Negotiations with the Republican government are complete. The possibility of an armed conflict in the Nord Highlands has been successfully averted. However, they did demand that we hand over the mercenaries responsible for the attack as part of their terms. I suppose that's acceptable. After all, there was a shortcoming on our side that allowed that incident to occur. We should consider this a chance to place Rocksmith in our debt, especially with the trade conference on the horizon. Yes, sir. Though, it's regrettable that we were unable to catch the Mastermind. There's not a doubt in my mind that he's one of the ringleaders. <laughs> it seems we'll need to exercise greater caution from now on, if this is what they're capable of. Our next concern is the upcoming Summer Festival. Any thoughts as to the optimal placement of the Ironbloods? I believe their primary target will be next month's trade conference. I propose posting Lecter to the east and Milliam to the west. That leaves me here to take care of the capital. <laughs> it's almost like you read my mind. Very well then. I'll leave the preparations to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> With all respect, don't be afraid of working me hard, sir. I could run these kinds of logistics in my sleep. Ha! I'm all too aware of how indebted I am to your abilities. That's why I'm leaving the Summer Festival in your capable hands. Perhaps you may even consider using them as a test. I... Please excuse my intrusion, Your Excellency. His Excellency the Governor has arrived and wishes to speak with you. Ah, show him in. As you wish, sir. Coming in. Oh, forgive my intrusion. I didn't realize you had company. No, it's quite all right. I just finished giving my report. It's wonderful to see you again, Governor. Likewise. I think it's been, what, two months since we last spoke? I'm in your debt for helping out with the security arrangements at last month's commemoration event at City Hall. I've been looking forward to thanking you in person. Glad to have been of service. I'll be sure to pass on your thanks to everyone else involved. Anyway, if you'll excuse me. Good work as always, Captain. It never ceases to amaze me that a woman like that heads up the Ironbloods. Your icy maiden has the provincial armies positively scared stiff. <laughs> Competent as she is, she's not the group's primary member. But she and the rest of the Ironbloods continue to do some fine work. Especially against those cunning vipers amongst the ranks of the nobility and the four great houses in particular. Agreed. But we'll need to stay vigilant. <laughs> I'm pleased that you agree. Imperial Governor Carl Reynolds. The feeling's mutual. Chancellor Gilead Osborne. Of course. And that's exactly why I intend to go with him. Next month's conference may be the West Samoria Trade Conference in name. But it's far more than that. It's the region's first international conference in modern times. So the discussions won't be limited to economic matters. Regional security and other timely issues are sure to come up. I see. So that's why all the region's heads of state will be in attendance? Precisely. President Rocksmith will represent the Republic of Calvert, of course. Prince Albert will be representing the Principality of Ermaferia as its head of state. 
Crown Princess Claudia will be coming to represent Liberal in place of the Queen. And representing Crossbell State, we have Mayor Croyce and Speaker McDowell. All of them are either heads of state or they're acting representatives. Meanwhile, Erebonia is sending Chancellor Osborne as a representative of the Imperial government. But Father is the head of state, isn't he? Indeed, and that's why I'm planning to go as well, even though I'm far from the ideal candidate. The Imperial family needs to be represented to make sure all sides are on equal terms. You shouldn't be so harsh on yourself. But I think I understand the situation. I feel so ashamed. I shouldn't have to rely on you to educate me about simple politics like this. Hmm? Recently, I feel as though all my inadequacies have been staring me in the face. I wish every day I had the intelligence and quick-wittedness you possess. And I wonder, am I truly capable of inheriting the throne from father? <laughs> You know, Her Highness Princess Claudia of Liberal once said exactly the same thing. She did? As the successor to the throne of Liberal, I've heard that she agonized over whether she was fit to become queen. But eventually, she came to terms with her own inexperience and vowed that she would strive each day to overcome it. And I have no reason to believe that my talented brother cannot do the same. Oliver, thank you. Your support means a lot to me. That said, I do think you should spend more of your time living life the way you want to. I don't think anyone would blame you for wanting to indulge your interests once in a while. <laughs> I am how I am, I'm afraid. To be honest, I'm a little jealous of how being so open and carefree comes so naturally to you. <laughs> well, I think it'd be less concerning for all involved if you avoided taking after me too much. Another thing. I sometimes find myself admiring Chancellor Osborne's strong-willed nature as well. Oh? He was quite forceful in introducing the Imperial Transportation Act last year, despite the opposition's objections. But ever since then, I've heard the number of orbital car accidents has fallen dramatically. I can see why Father trusts him so much. Well, I wouldn't disagree that was a fine piece of policy-making. The campaign he launched with the help of City Hall was exceptionally well executed. But, on the other hand... Honestly, don't you think it's a little early in the day to be having a stuffy political discussion? Alfin? Oh, have your lessons already finished for the day? Indeed! They gave us the afternoon off to prepare for the summer festival! Come on, Cedric. You need to stop taking everything so seriously. We're 15. It's far too early for us to be worrying about politics. Actually, I'm not sure 15 is too early, to be honest. What you should be concerned about is being more of a man at official parties. Blushing head to toe just from a lady asking you to dance? Shameful. Totally shameful. Oh, come on. Why do you have to bring that up again? <laughs> you know, that did wonders for his popularity. The ladies at that party were swooning left and right. He was playing their maternal instincts like a heart. Well, I can't deny that. Even some of the men there were fawning over him, saying Cedric was more of a youthful flower than me. Surely you're kidding, right? <laughs> That reminds me, Alfin. Have you decided on your dance partner for the upcoming garden party? Yeah. You've always avoided dancing at official functions. <laughs> Curious, are we? Well, I do have someone in mind this time. Although whether I can get him to say yes... R really My, my. It sounds like you aren't just blowing smoke. Imperial Chronicle is going to have a field day when they find out. Y you're really going to dance with someone? C could it be a son from one of the four great houses? <laughs> That's for me to know and you to discover. He is a noble, though. I'll give you that much. Oh, that reminds me. 
Prince Oliver? I have a proposal I'd like to discuss with you. I should open that letter from Reen that came in this morning. <sighs> I'm almost afraid to think how Her Highness would have reacted if she found this. Dear Miss Schwarzer. <laughs> really, Reen? Still Miss Schwarzer? I'm your own sister. Mid-July. Summer had come to Trista, and that meant it was time for us students to dust off our short-sleeved shirts. of experience under our belts, we finally found ourselves adjusting to the rigors of our coursework. And it was during those early days of summer, before the heat became well and truly withering, that we saw the start of a uniquely seasonal new lesson. All right. That should be enough of a warm-up. I'm supposed to remind you that swimming classes here are meant to teach you skills relevant to military service. You know, how not to drown if you wind up in the water, how to save others from drowning, CPR, that kind of stuff. In fact, CPR is a pretty vital skill on any battlefield. Reen, Elisa, would you care to give us a demonstration? Uh, instructor! In front of everyone? Come on, guys, just kidding around. Point is, it's still important that you learn how to do it and that you won't hesitate to use it if the need arises. Whether that means locking lips with someone of the same sex or the opposite? Uh... Of course. Well, it is a skill we can use to save someone's life. After we've covered that, I'll be timing how long it takes each of you to swim the length of the pool. Will you give me a hand, Laura? As you wish. You're up, Gaius. Ready, and go! You're next, Emma. Ready, go! Wow, look at Gaius go! Yeah, I already used to swim in that lake in the Highlands every summer, so I kind of expected that. Emma's a lot faster than I thought she'd be, too. Though it's not much her swimming ability that I envy. What do you... Oh. Oh, 
I get it. You don't need to get it. Anyway, what are you doing just staring at girls in swimsuits? I'm not staring. My eyes are just pointed in that general direction. Well, any guy would have a hard time taking his eyes off of our class's girls. I'm not even sure who to gawk at first. I mean, even the other guys are handsome. You're pretty toned yourself, Reem. You think? Well, it does look like you put a lot into your exercise and training. As for you, Elliot, I think you're better just the way you are. Oh, really? I don't think I want to imagine Elliot all buff and ripped. Hmm? Hey, what's that on the left side of your chest, Reen? Some kind of scar? Hmm? Oh, you're right. It's so faint that I hadn't noticed it before. Oh, that. It's some kind of mark. It's been there as long as I can remember. Don't know how I got it, though. Wow. Actually, when I look at it more closely, it looks more like a bunch of little scars all knit together. It makes you look really manly and tough. I kind of wish I had one now. Seriously? It really wouldn't suit you. Trust me. I can't believe we finish with the exact same time. We must be destined to strive against each other forever. <sighs> what are you talking about? The only one I was competing against was myself. And even then, I barely put much effort into it. Well, it's not like I was giving my best either. <laughs> These two. <sighs> that was refreshing. I wouldn't mind swimming a little longer, actually. Okay, Laura, are you ready? I'll time your lap. Though I doubt I really need to, considering you're in the swimming club. No, please do. So Laura's next. You can tell she's a member of the swimming club. Just look at the way she stands on the block. Ready, and go! Whoa, she's fast. How is she doing it? Impressive. Well done. Let's see, 20.02 seconds. Not bad at all. All right, I think it's time for me to dive into the mix. Everyone, pick a partner. It's time for a little head-to-head -head competition. Well, that came out of nowhere. Uh-oh, races. <laughs> it appears we've been given a chance to settle this once and for all. I'm ready when you are. I think we'd be a good match, Emma. How about it? <laughs> True. Our times were pretty close. Hmm. How about it, Laura? Want to partner up with me? Not today, I'm afraid. I wish to challenge V this time. Me? Laura? But your times weren't even close. Alright, let's go with that. I guess that leaves me with... Reen. It's your lucky day again! Wait, why me? It would be pretty effective as part of a diet plan. Okay, let's see what you got. Y yeah. There's no way I'm going to win this, is there? <laughs> Go easy on me, Gaius. <laughs> Same to you. Ready? Go!
I actually won. <laughs> Nicely done, Reen. Oh, I'm exhausted. Are you both ready? Not quite. Fee, how about giving it all you've got this time? Huh? Uh, Laura? What if I already did? I don't think so. I could tell just by watching you. Don't make light of me. Your earlier time was certainly not the best you're capable of. <laughs> well, it's not very polite to your opponent to hold back. This isn't like the battlefields you grew up fighting on. It's a place you can grow and better yourself by challenging others. Deep down, I know you realize that. <sighs> hmm. Good. Then let us begin. like this, it's obvious how different their builds are. If build were all that mattered, we would have turned in faster times than either of them. I imagine the difference lies in their control of their bodies. Yeah, this'll be one to watch. Ready? Go! What? It's incredible! was too close to call. No, there was a tiny difference. Laura came out ahead on this one. Having longer arms might have been the deciding factor even. Oh, I wish I could have joined in. <laughs> well done. <sighs> the same to you. You can do this when you want to, and yet you consistently hold back. <laughs> no reason really? Too much effort, I guess. It seems we truly could not find a middle ground.
guess there are cicadas around Trista too. When I hear them, I always feel like that's when summer's really arrived. Retiring for the day, Schwarzer? Instructor Nightheart. Yes. Are you heading out too? Indeed. I have some business to take care of with my division, so I'll be returning there tomorrow. With that on the agenda, I thought it wise to finish the day's work early. Your division? Oh yeah, you were sent here by the Imperial Army, right? Correct, but because of that, it's difficult to keep a regular schedule here. Anyway, while I'm here, I want to acknowledge the work you did during your field study last month. You mean that incident in Nord? The same. Reading the Army's report, it seemed that armed conflict with the Republican Army was a real possibility. While the Intelligence Division no doubt had a hand in resolving the conflict, you and the other members of your group played an integral part in averting a war. You deserve credit for that. Um, thanks. You haven't been able to find out anything more about that man with the glasses, have you? The one who hired the mercenaries and introduced himself as Gideon? Regrettably not. The intelligence division is looking into his identity. But they, personally, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they had discovered something already, but chose not to share it with us. I see. Schwarzer, I'll be the first to admit you performed admirably out there. But I assume you're aware that luck played a large part in your success? <laughs> well, I... Reading your report, the number of arbitrary decisions stood out to me. For an army to function, its members need to work together as a group united under the will of its commander. As an organization, it can't perform at its best if its members disregard authority and act on instinct. You've already been over this in class, I believe? Yes, Instructor. I realize now that our actions in Nord were rash, but they made things harder for the Lieutenant General. If it wasn't for our inexperience, we might have been able to capture the man with the glasses, too. If you understand that, I have nothing further to say on the matter. It's not my intent to belittle your efforts. Your report indicates that you were forced to make a number of split-second decisions. I'm not suggesting that there's no place for flexibility and independent thought in an organization like the Army. But it's vital for you to understand the reasoning behind and importance of that structure and to respect it. Yes, Instructor. Teaching cadets to respect and work within that system should be the job of their class's instructor. Though considering her background, I was foolish to expect that of her. Her? You're talking about Instructor Sarah? Indeed. Granted, she's quite skilled but she lacks the disposition and diligence of a soldier. I understand she didn't come from an army background, but with her position, one would hope she would pick up on the basics. 
Oh, so... Do you know what Instructor Sarah did before she became an instructor here? Oh? Is she keeping mum about that? I just assumed you were already aware. Before she came to Thor's, Sarah was... Uh-uh-uh! It's not very becoming of a gentleman to go around broadcasting a lady's secrets, you know. Instructor Sarah. Instructor Valestein. I totally understand where you're coming from. You meet a beautiful, captivating lady and you want to know more. But don't let hard-headed officer types like our friend here rub off on you too much. Got it? You always play by the rules, and you'll find yourself in a jam someday when you encounter people who don't. I instructor? <laughs> You're one to talk. I hardly think a capricious instructor who leaves everything to chance is capable of guiding our cadets to greatness. Well, of course, I couldn't do a better job than the ace of the 4th Armored Division. Or was that the Provincial Army? I mean, you've got the whole tradition and status or everything mindset down pat. Hmm. These two really don't seem to get along. First Sharon, now Instructor Nightheart. Instructor Sarah almost seems like she's spoiling for a fight. Who do we have here? Well, if it isn't Instructor Sarah and Instructor Nightheart. Instructor Thomas? Oh, and young Reen is with you too! Simply marvelous. It looks like you're having a downright jolly time. Would you mind if I joined you? Uh, I'm not sure that would be... Come along, Reen. We need to hurry back to the dorms now. We do? Oh, but while we're all together like this... What say we have a few drinks together and enjoy some quality faculty bonding time? I heard the two of you really know how to hold your liquor. I'm afraid I really must. I've actually just been hit with the overwhelming urge to drink alone in my room tonight. Now, now, there's no need to be shy. We're all friends here. Oh, I know. Why don't you come along with us, Reen? We can't float a beer your way quite yet, but I'd be happy to treat you to something else. No, it's quite all right. You teachers are always so busy, I'd hate to get in the way of your quality bonding time. So, if you'll excuse me, I'll be sure to let Sharon know that you're having dinner out tonight, Instructor. No, Reen, well, wait! What kind of heartless monster are you? Get back here, Reen Schwarzer! <laughs> well, shall we be off? I... I couldn't possibly. I need to depart early tomorrow morning, so I really must insist. <laughs>